Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me today. In the previous video, we took a look at how to use the filters area to create individual pivot table worksheets from the item in the filter field. Today, we'll take it a step further. We'll take a look at how to filter data in a pivot table with auto filter and slicers. If you are yet to see the previous video, please click on the link in the description box below. If you have any questions on pivot tables, please feel free to drop it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So let's go over our examples today. I've created a report on sales by customer. Customer is in the rows area and sales value in values. The goal now is to filter by two criteria. First, we want to display only sales greater than 50,000. Second, we want only customers that have store in their names. For the first one, we have to filter the values. To do that, just click on this auto filter icon, select value filters, and select greater than. Here we are saying show items for which sales is greater than 50,000. The drop down selection allows you to select other value fields if you have more than one value field and you can modify the criteria here. Click OK. Sort largest to smallest. There you go. Take a look at the icon. Now it has a funnel symbol indicating that a filter is active. When you click on it, you will see a check mark against the active filter. Now, take a look at the fields list. The funnel symbol indicates that a filter has been applied to the customer field. Now, let me mention here that you can also filter from the fields list. Moving on to our second criteria, we want to display customers with store in their names. So go to label filters, select contains. We are saying show items for which the label, that is the customer name, contains store. Similar to what we have in the value filters, this drop down selection allows you to modify the criteria. Note that the label filter allows the use of wildcard characters. That is not required for this example. However, if you want to know how to use them, you can check my video on advanced if function. Click OK. Now I have customers with store in their name. Check out what has happened to the value filters. It's gone. Take a look at the drop down. The check mark is only activated for label filters. This is because by default, Excel allows only one option to filter. Now to allow for multiple filters, right mouse click anywhere in the pivot table and select pivot table options. Under tools and filters, check this box. Allow multiple filters per field. Click OK. So now we can go back to activate the value filters. Greater than 50,000. And now we have our report. Now if you want to clear the filter, click on per filter right here. Quick tip. You would have noticed that the column width moved each time I made a change to the pivot table. Now to prevent this from happening, right click, go to pivot table options, under layout and format, and check this box. Auto fit column width on update. Slicers are visual filters. They make your report interactive and user friendly. I think slicers are really cool and they are available in most versions of Excel. You can use slicers for Excel tables, pivot tables and pivot charts. I demonstrated the use of slicers in my video on Excel tables. So today we'll take a look at the use of slicers for pivot tables. Here is a pivot table showing the products sold by sales agents. Let's go ahead and insert a slicer for sales agent. I'll show you two ways I insert slicers. Click anywhere in the pivot table. Go to the Analyze tab. Under Filter, click on Insert Slicer. This brings up the fields list similar to what you have here. You can select a slicer or multiple slicers. I'll select Sales Agent 
and year here they are i'll delete this so i can show you the second method to delete just click on the slicer and press delete the second method from the fields list right click on the field and add a slicer the difference between the two methods is that you can you can only insert one slicer at a time from the fields list while you can insert multiple slicers from the analyze tab once you click on the slicer a slicer or options tab depending on your version of excel appears in the ribbon let's see how the slicer works Simply click on one of the items inside the slicer to filter your data. To view the report for Justin only, I'll simply click the button for Justin. What happens is that the pivot table will update immediately to show only the data that matches my filter, Justin. I can do the same for Donald and Trent. To select multiple items, you can hold Ctrl or you turn on the multi-select tool. You can use Alt and S to turn the multi selection tool on or off. You can also hold Shift key to select multiple items chronologically. You click on the first item and hold the Shift key and click on the last item. This selects all the items within that range. To remove the filters, I'll click on Clear Filters. The cool thing is that you can also use a slicer to filter data that is not shown in the pivot table. We can insert a slicer for a year and the pivot table will filter by year. There you go. Quick tip. When you have empty cells in your report, you can automatically fill it with a zero or text. Go to pivot table options. Under layout and format, check this box. For empty cells, show output no sales. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'll change that to zero. You can arrange the items in the slicer on multiple columns. Click on the slicer. In the options tab, you can modify the number of columns. Take a look at the slicer. You can adjust the size and height of the slicers here. Alternatively, you can use the pull handles to resize them. Now, a scroll bar might appear if the resizing results in a hidden item. To move the slicer, click on the slicer. When you see the four-edged arrow, drag it to a new position. You can use Alt to snap the slicer to grid or hold Shift to align it properly. To prevent the slicer from moving around, right click and select size and properties. The shortcut for this is Ctrl and 1. Check this box. Disable resizing and moving, then you won't be able to move it. You'll need that when building an Excel dashboard. You can change the style of the slicer in the gallery. You can create a custom slicer here by changing the font, colors. You can also remove the border. To set any style as a default for the workbook, just right click on it and select set as default. You can change the caption of the slicer here or in slicer settings. You can change the name of the slicer. However, it won't be visible on the slicer. So I don't use this feature. You can change the caption and it will be visible on the slicer. Let's change this to agent filter. There you go. Or you can remove the header. If you do this, clear filters and multi-select tool will also be removed. So it might not always be a good idea. You can modify the sort order of the items here and select other sorting and filtering options here. I have three pivot tables here. Now, best practice is to keep the tables on separate sheets. However, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll keep them on the same sheet. Let's give the pivot tables names so we can easily identify each table. This will be customer, this product, and this month. 
You can click on any of the tables to create a slicer. Let's insert one for agent and another one for year. Now to connect this slicer to the tables, go to the option tab, click on report connections. You can also right click on the slicer to bring up the report connections dialog box. The list of all pivot tables will appear in the dialog box. Then select all the pivot tables you want to link to the slicer. Click OK. Let's filter for each agent. There you go. Let's filter for year. Now, if you don't clear the filter for agent, the year filter will only apply to the selected agent. Please note that we're able to connect these pivot tables because they share the same cache. That is, they share the same source data. I discussed this in the previous video. If they don't share a cache, you will get a warning. If you want to disconnect any of the tables, you can click on report connections again and uncheck the box to disconnect the pivot table. A pivot timeline can be used to filter by date if you have a date field in your data. You can insert a timeline from the Analyze tab or with a right click in the fields list. However, this option will only be active for the date field. Take a look. Is grayed out for the other fields. So inside the timeline, you can move it or expand the height and width. You can edit the caption here. I'll change it to sales timeline. You can use the timeline to filter by years, months, quarters, days. You can use the time span control to select a range and use the handles to adjust the date. You can drag the scroll bar to the time period you want as well. Like slicers, you can use the timeline with multiple pivot tables if they share the same cache. Right click and select report connections and select the tables you want to connect. The timeline can be a useful tool, but I'm not a fan. It's a wrap for today. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll discuss pivot charts and other aspects of pivot tables in the next video. Bye for now.